I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This is a really interesting reaction because notice that you're told that there's an excess amount of this Wittig reagent. Anytime that you see an excess amount of some reagent, it's likely that your mechanism should include it reacting more than once. And in this case, what's first gonna happen is the Wittig reagent is not going to act as a mechanism to transform a carbonyl compound into an alkene, but instead the first step is actually going to be deprotonation. Remember that another way to draw a Wittig reagent is when it is looking like what is called an illid. So an illid is anytime you have two adjacent atoms that have opposite charges. And in this case, what you have is the carbon has a lone pair and the phosphorus ends up being positively charged with the carbon acting as an anion. And this is just a different resonance form of this Wittig reagent here where there is a phosphorus to carbon double bond. So the first step in this reaction is actually gonna be deprotonation of this alcohol where this carbon ion can come and deprotonate that alcohol to leave behind a negatively charged oxygen species. So this is going to leave us behind with our five-membered ring, but now this is going to be O minus with this oxygen having three lone pairs on it, giving it a negative charge. And this species actually allows us to open up our ring because notice we started with a five-membered ring and end up with a linear chain. And when we do this, what will happen is this will open the ring by taking these electrons in this carbon to oxygen bond and moving them to oxygen. So in doing so, we're still preserving our charge because even though this top oxygen is becoming neutral, it is now going to be an aldehyde at this position where we have our linear chain and at this position we have a negatively charged oxygen. And now the Wittig reagent can come in and behave as you've probably seen Wittig reagents react previously where they transform carbonyl compounds into alkenes. So if we re-enter, because remember we had an excess amount of this Wittig reagent, from here the lone pair on carbon can come in attack this carbonyl oxygen, moving up these electrons. And this is going to generate the next intermediate, which is where we have a negative charge on this oxygen. We still have our hydrogen, but our carbon is now here, and it is still attached to the phosphorus, which remember is positively charged. And now we have two H's here, we had a hydrogen here, and the rest of our chain is still present with this negatively charged oxygen. So now this oxygen, which is negatively charged, and it has three lone pairs, can coordinate or donate electron density to this phosphorus atom. And this is the classic Wittig reaction mechanism, where now we're generating this ring system, where we have this as our intermediate, and the rest of the molecule remains the same. And this is actually how we're gonna end up forming this alkene that's present in our final product because we are going to liberate this phosphorus to oxygen bond. So this triphenylphosphine oxide actually leaves and you're left behind with the alkene as the next portion of your molecule. So at this point, we have formed most of our product and all that remains is to use our acidic workup to protonate this alkoxide. And once we protonate this al alkoxide, because it will come and attack the proton, forming finally our final product, which is gonna be this alcohol. So you've probably seen the Wittig reaction before, and remember the mechanism follows the traditional pathway, but since we had an excess amount, because you're forming a carbanion, it can act as a base and deprotonate our initial alcohol. Otherwise, the mechanism should look relatively familiar to you because Wittig reagents allow us to transform carbonyl compounds, which we formed here, into alkenes at this step. If you enjoyed this week's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss out on another mechanism. I'll see you next Monday.